benign prosthetic hyperplasia or BPH uh, affects generally men over the age of 50 and it affects roughly 50 percent of men over the age of 50 and it involves an expansion of the center of the prostate uh, making flow of uh, urine difficult. Men should really only be concerned about BPH if they have symptoms from it. BPH isn't something that we screen a non-symptomatic population for, so we really only treat men who are bothered by it or have symptoms from it. And uh, the symptoms typically fall into one of two categories. Some men have obstructive symptoms where they will have slowing of their urinary stream, uh, hesitancy or a delay in urination, starting and stopping of the stream, or a sense of not emptying their bladder completely. There are many uh, treatment options for BPH, and they range anywhere from office-based, or what we call minimally invasive procedures, to procedures that are done uh, in the operating room under general anesthesia. Obviously, the also, uh, other treatment options would be observation, meaning doing nothing and just living with the symptoms. That's an option for many men. Uh, medications, which come in, in different varieties. There's, there's two major types of prostate medications. Um, or uh, procedures would be the, the third class of treatments. Most of the procedures to treat BPH are designed to either remove or destroy the overgrown tissue. Um, and, and there's a number of different ways of destroying prostate tissue and usually it's done with some sort of energy. Um, and the different types of treatment would be uh, microwave energy, um, energy produced by the condensation of steam to water, uh, laser energy, um, electrical current, um, or sometimes uh, cutting off the blood supply to the prostate to actually shrink the prostate that way. Um, so most of the procedures are designed to destroy or remove prostate tissue. So uh, HOLEP is uh, an acronym which stands for Homium Laser Enucleation of the Prostate. And that's a procedure that uh, was developed in uh, New Zealand in the 1990s and then subsequently has made its way to the United States. And it, it uh, represents about 4% of all enlarged prostate surgeries that are done. Uh, it's a little bit unusual in that there's not many people that do it uh, because not too many people have been trained on it. And um, it, it essentially removes the center of the prostate or the overgrown portion of the prostate. And uh, it gives the most complete removal of prostate tissue of any of the procedures available and that typically translates into a better outcome for patients as far as their urinary flow, relief of symptoms, reduction in PSA, being able to get off of their prostate medications. There is no connection between BPH and prostate cancer, so uh, BPH does not uh, turn into prostate cancer and they should be viewed and treated as independent processes. If, if a man comes in with an elevated PSA level, it does not necessarily mean that they have prostate cancer. And, and in fact, PSA is probably a better predictor of prostate size than it is the presence of prostate cancer. So um, it's important that a man with an elevated PSA sees a urologist has an appropriate evaluation with a, a rectal exam, and then the decision is made as to whether a biopsy is appropriate or not. The uh, American Urological Association currently recommends routine prostate cancer screening with PSA uh, between the ages of 55 and 69. So that is the current recommendations for, for all men. Uh, now, there are certain men that will benefit from screening between the ages of 40 and 55, and that would be men who are at a, 
at an increased risk of, of having an aggressive prostate cancer, which would be uh, men with a strong family history of prostate cancer, uh, which would be um, one or two first degree relatives like your dad or your brother, or sometimes both have had prostate cancer. Uh, or African Americans are encouraged to have a baseline PSA uh, younger than 55 to at least establish a baseline uh, because African Americans have been known to have more aggressive forms of prostate cancer. Uh, there's probably little value in screening the entire population over the age of 70 for prostate cancer. Um, Exceptions to that would be men who you're already following who have an elevated PSA. Um, stopping screening over the age of 70 uh, is generally for men who have a, a low normal PSA.